Hi, I'm Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Greta gives a great speech and haters gonna hate. We look at some of the social reaction to her words yesterday. A glacier in Venezuela is dying, the latest victim of the climate crisis. Google wins a landmark case in the courts over the rights of users to be forgotten. And a unique way for doctors to practice how to approach child patients. And at the top of our news feed, Greta and the Trolls. The activist speech at the UN Climate Summit yesterday has been widely seen as a significant moment in the fight to save the planet. But she's been attacked by some sections of the internet, attacked in ways that seem to many of us dishonest and designed to undermine the entire debate over humanity's damaging effect on the environment. Here's Esra. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Greta Thunberg called out world leaders at the UN for their inaction on the climate crisis. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? Her supporters spread her passionate speech on social media, but the backlash was strong. Some asked. This is very, very wrong and disturbing too. Where are her parents? And compared her to horror movie characters. I, anyone else find that chilling? A time of tribulation has come. A test is at hand. The final test. The U.S. president also added to the pylon. She seems like a very happy young girl looking forward to a bright and wonderful future. So nice to see. But these efforts to undermine Greta and the movement she started seem to be failing. They often come from people who have a history of climate denial. And activists say some critiques have an element of sexism about them. I think some people's unease with Greta Thunberg is that she rarely smiles. Girls and women are supposed to be smiley to put men at ease and appear emollient, and she's just not playing. For many, Greta is on the right side of history. The world is waking up, and change is coming whether you like it or not. And her supporters seem to be gaining strength. The very worst men on the internet are rightfully terrified of 16-year-old Greta Thunberg and it is glorious. She has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize and is part of a group of young people who went to the UN to accuse Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany and Turkey of violating the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The complaint is symbolic, but meant to pressure governments to reduce their environmental impacts and protect children's rights. China, the world's biggest polluter, has not ratified the treaty. The US hasn't even signed it. That may have been on Greta Thunberg's mind when she saw President Trump enter the room yesterday. And millions of people likely feel her frustration. Well, the effects of the climate crisis are being seen all over the planet, from the heat waves in Europe this summer to droughts in India to the deaths of glaciers, as seen here in Venezuela. Here's Adama. These scientists are on a mission to record the demise of Venezuela's last iceberg. Most of the Earth's ice is stored in polar regions. But glaciers also exist in some mountainous regions of the tropics, mainly in South America. Global heating is causing the Humboldt Glacier to disappear at an alarming rate. Scientists say the ice sheet in the Andes Mountains will be gone within 20 years. The fundamental idea of this project will be to understand what happens once Venezuela's last glacier withdraws and how life will colonize the highlands of Sierra Nevada of Merida, which practically have not been studied at all. They visit the glacier often, but it's not easy. It sits within the Sierra Nevada National Park, some 5,000 metres above sea level. 
It's witnessing changes that are occurring in the highest areas of the country. And if we don't do it, no one will know that many of those species that are unique to the planet may be about to disappear. The terrain is not the only challenge in a country in crisis. Blackouts mean keeping lab samples refrigerated is a challenge. And gas shortages often mean researchers have to work from home. They even reuse sheets of paper to record field data because fresh supplies are so scarce. Four million Venezuelans have fled due to skyrocketing hyperinflation, power cuts and shortages in food and medicine. As a scientist, you can't wait and abandon your research and say, I'll suspend it and start again in 10 years. I won't do this now, and I'll pick it up later. You have to keep on going. Scientists say, once the ice clears, a new ecosystem may develop, which makes this a unique opportunity to study how the climate crisis impacts our world. But only if these scientists can carry on with their work. All right, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now, a potentially huge moment in the UK earlier today. The Supreme Court says that Boris Johnson broke the law when he decided to put Parliament on a break. And by doing so, he may have also lied to the Queen. And social media is full of hot takes on the news, but some are spending a great deal of time focusing on the brooch worn by Judge Lady Hale as she delivered the ruling. It was a blinged out spider and people have been engaging in criminology to try and work out what it means, but I can save you all the time. She just loves massive brooches. As you can see from this centipede, this dragonfly. This footage has gone viral on social media. It's said to be Uyghurs in China, head shaved and handcuffed, being led onto trains. It's apparently been verified as genuine by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. More than a million Uyghurs have been held in what China called re-education centers in the region of East Turkestan. And this video from Sumatra in Indonesia posted to Twitter has been watched 7 million times and is truly terrifying. That red glow you're seeing comes from forest fires. Rainforests have been cleared for palm oil plantations. Schools are closed and people are getting, a, getting sick as a result of this haze. The person filming the video says, believe it or not, this is daytime, mum. Just 10 minutes to one. Now, Google has won a major case at the European court, arguing the rules on removing an individual's details apply only to Europe and not globally. Now, this is a major moment for privacy laws around the world. And I asked Paul Bernal, an expert in law as it relates to the internet, what he thought. He began by saying the ruling could be a way for the court to begin deterring people from using virtual private networks or VPNs. Yes, I, I, I'm sure VPNs were in their mind when they worded it this way, but I, I don't think they quite dare go that far because they understand the other implications. And in reality, they will be using VPNs all the time because VPNs don't just conceal your location, they provide extra security and they provide all kinds of other things that, are, that, that you want. So um, people, for example, might well access their company's um, business um, servers using a VPN because that way they're much less likely to be intercepted or to be uh, effectively hacked. So you can't really ban VPNs, um, except we, I mean, you're going to have big implications, big, big bad ramifications if you do. But they don't want people using VPNs as a matter of course, and they will be trying to stop kind of casual use. I think it's complicated for Google because to one to in you know, one one level they've already completely accepted that they are going to be regulated locally by by um, uh, local regulators in Europe by they they support supposedly the GDPR and it's really interesting that Facebook um, now embraced the idea of the GDPR despite lobbying against it for for, for many many years. Um, they want to lower the power of regulation generally, or rather, to be more exact, they want to stop regulators getting stronger generally. And this is part of that, I think, rather than rather than specifically about the local thing. They want to make sure that regula regulators don't feel emboldened to, to, to push their regulation everywhere. The European Union is a, is a kind of proxy 
for other regulators everywhere. So regulators in, in uh, from Russia, from from Turkey, even may wish to to. to to extend their reach over other areas within within Google. Google doesn't want that. It makes their life complicated to have to deal with lots of different regulators at the same time. It makes their life harder in terms of demonstrating that they are champions of freedom of expression, which is what they how they like to, to present themselves. And we keep on moving around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Tuesday. The rights group Global Witness say that more people have died defending land in the Philippines than in any other nation on Earth. The organization says that the death toll over the past year was reported as 30, but the real number is far higher. The victims have been activists challenging mining companies, fruit farmers and loggers. The Zimbabwean government has closed a water treatment plant in the capital Harare, a plant which makes sure that water for two million people is safe. Zimbabwe has not got enough money to buy the chemicals needed to run the plant. There are now concerns that waterborne diseases like cholera could spread. 26 people died from cholera in the capital last year, and that was when the plant was working. A study of Harvard University in the States has revealed that 43% of white people who go to the school get in because their parents went there, they're athletes, or they are children of people who donate to the college or teach there. The study is being used as a critique of the college's entrance policies. A case about how Harvard allegedly discriminates against applicants from Asian backgrounds is currently being decided by a judge. And science has proved what billions of cat owners already know. Cats form a strong bond with their owners just as dogs do. It subverts the stereotype that cats are selfish animals and confirms that felines rely on their owners for emotional well-being as well as food. And now to Afghanistan, where young people have been using dance as a form of distraction from the destruction of war. and last up some doctors in Iceland invited children to bring their broken dolls and teddy bears to hospital to get fixed it's given medical students say a fun way to work on their bedside manner with younger patients from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and you can follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe and add. See you again tomorrow. <laughs>